Hey, super scientists, we're looking at your evolution EOG review guide. Number one, what scientists discovered biological evolution, that is Charles Darwin, referred to as the father of evolution. Number two, what is evolution? It is change over time. Number three, what did Darwin notice about the beaks of the finches? So looking at these finches that Darwin was studying in the Galapagos Islands, you can see that there are slight differences, particularly in the beaks, the shape of the beaks. So Darwin noticed that the finches had differently shaped beaks. And why were their beaks different? Well, they were different because they were suited to the food that was available for them to eat in their particular environment, in the island in which they lived in the Galapagos. So if you're just gonna be picking up insects and it just needs a sharp pointy beak in order to grab the insect, if you are going to be um, cracking open shells for um, seeds and fruits and that kind of thing, you're gonna need a thicker beak in order to break through that harder outer shell. Number four, types of evolution, biological. Biological evolution is referring to living things. Geological evolution is referring to earth materials or our surface. And technological evolution is referring to the way in which society and people um, modify technologies to meet our needs. For example, cell phones, medicine, that kind of thing. Number five, what are adaptations? So adaptations are characteristics that help, pe help people, help organisms, help animals to survive. So characteristics that help organisms to survive are adaptations, how they're adapted to their environment. Examples of adaptations are gonna be defense mechanisms, like a scorpion can sting, for example. Thick fur. Woolly mammoths have thicker fur, polar bears have thick, coarse fur, lots of animals that live in colder environments. Camouflage is another adaptation. So those are just a couple. Speed, like cheetahs can run really fast, so there's lots of different types of adaptations on how an organism can survive in its environment. Number seven, what is natural selection? So natural selection is also called survival of the fittest. So what that means is the organisms best suited to their environment are gonna be the ones that can survive. So the organisms who are best adapted, best suited to living in their particular environment are going to survive. For example, if an organism doesn't have thick fur but it lives in a really cold area, then it's not gonna be as likely to live as an organism that has thicker fur. It's more adapted to that environment. Number eight, artificial selection. Artificial selection is also called selective breeding. This is how humans impact evolution. So we talked about uh, the Belgian blue cow and how it is a lot um, more muscular and that is the particular trait that people wanted to breed. That's the particular trait that people thought was more desirable and so they bred that organism to be more muscular and to be taller and a bigger cow basically. So people who are cat breeders or dog breeders, they breed those particular organisms to exhibit particular traits that they want seen like the fluffiest fur and the cutest pink nose and whatever. Number nine, analogous structures are similar structures, but those structures um, do not indicate that there were common ancestors. So they're similar structures, but no common ancestor. So an example, wings. Lots of organisms that fly in particular are gonna have wings. Crickets have wings, birds have wings, bats have wings, pteranodons had wings. Lots of things have wings because they can fly. Or in the case of penguins, they're flightless, but that doesn't indicate that they are all related. What are homologous structures? Your stem homo 
means same. That is one way to help you remember homologous structures. So homologous structures are similar structures and those structures are due to having common ancestry. So homologous structures, same ancestor, common ancestor indicate indicative of the having the similar structures. So examples of homologous structures, the picture here where we can see the different arm articulations. So you've got uh, the humerus, the radius ulna, and all of these organisms. So that indicates at one point there was similar DNA that was in common. So I'm gonna put arm bones, since you have your little picture there. And you can see that. Also, I'm putting another example, cats. Organisms in the cat family look very similar. Whether it's cheetah or jaguar or house cat or bobcat or lion or tiger, you can tell that they all are in the Felidae family. They all have similarities in common. Number 11, what did Alfred Wegener discover? Continental drift. So what is continental drift? It is at the continents slowly move on our surface. And that is just about an inch or two every year. Pangaea is a supercontinent where all the continents were connected together. Number 14, what's the theory of plate tectonics? So plate tectonics just says Earth's crust is broken into sections that move. It's broken into sections, broken into plates that move. The different types of plate movements. Divergent, plates move apart. Convergent, the plates are gonna move together and then transform plates slide past one another. So an example of something that happens at divergent plate boundary that is very important that you remember is C4 spreading. So C4 sp spreading happens at the mid-ocean ridge on the bottom of the ocean. This process where a new ocean floor is created, that's at divergent plate boundary. And then example, at convergent plate boundaries, you are going to have mountains, for example, mountains that form. And um, also you can have subduction if the plates are of different densities. And that can form trenches too. Number 16, how can the movement of the continents, geological evolution affect living organisms causing biological evolution. So the movement of the continents is gonna force organisms to adapt or die or go extinct. And that can cause speciation. So that can be, speciation can be a result of geological evolution. So because the earth's surface changes, that can cause organisms to adapt or they can die out. What's biodiversity? Number 17, biodiversity, bio means life. So bio means life. And biodiversity is just a variety, differences, a variety of life in ecosystem or can even be referencing the world. So for example, at coral reefs, you see sponges and corals and you have algae and zoanthelae. You have lots of different types of organisms in the neuritic zone that will use those coral reefs like sea turtles and sharks and rays and all kinds of things. Speciation is new species forming And that can be caused by geographic isolation. So I'm gonna put an example of a cause. So 
So you may have a species that is related and then millions of years later, they may have evolved to the point where they no longer can interbreed or reproduce. So that means a new species has formed. And I, the reason I put geographic isolation is because you may have, like the finches, you may, for example, have organisms that are living in separate islands, like the case of these finches, and then eventually millions of years later, they could have evolved to the point where they are no longer capable of interbreeding. There could be reproductive isolation due to that geographic separation. And then number 19, your little chart here, biological evolution is going to be just change in living organisms. So change in living organisms. And examples of evidence for biological evolution, embryology. So that's looking at unborn um, babies, embryos, fetuses. Transitional fossils are gonna be um, a big example of biological evolution. You'll have questions at UG about transitional fossils. That's very important. So transitional fossils are just gonna be changing from ancestor, to present day organisms. So for example, how paleomastodons and mammoths have um, eventually evolved and you have today, you don't have paleomastodons or mammoths anymore, but we have elephants. Natural selection is the ones with the um, best suited, with adaptations that are best suited are going to survive. Analogous structures, we already talked about um, up here, and then homologous structures, we also talked about. So homologous structures indicate common ancestry. And the geological evolution on this other side. So geological evolution is change in earth surface or earth materials. And by earth materials, I mean sediment, rocks, that kind of thing, rock layers. Fossils are going to be um, living things that are trapped in rocks or that are preserved in rocks. And that can help be a piece of evidence. I'm just going to abbreviate over here. I'm going to put enviro for environment because... Um, fossils can indicate how an environment has changed. For example, if you have um, fossils, fish fossils that are found in an area now that is a dry quarry, then that indicates that at one point in time, then those that area had to have been underwater. Ice cores show how the atmosphere has changed. So atmospheric change. Continental drift, the continents move. Pangaea is the supercontinent. We already talked about how plate tectonics indicates geological evolution, so I'm gonna put that in here also. So anytime you have a question about plate tectonics or geological, or excuse me, plate tectonics or continental drift, it's indicating geological evolution. And then we know weathering, erosion, and deposition is how our surface is changed or modified over time. Weathering, breaking down the rocks, erosion, moving them around, and then depositing, laying them down. So weathering, Break, erosion, move, deposit, sits the stuff down. Number 20, what can cause differences within a species? Genetic diversity. So one particular organism within a species may be better suited to survive in that environment, and that's because of its DNA, because of its genetics. So for example, if you have a strawberry that um, when it gets really cold, dies, and then another strawberry plant that, when it gets really cold, survives, then they're both strawberries. However, their genetic makeup, their genetic composition is a little bit different, allowing that strawberry plant that was suited to live in a little bit of a colder environment to survive. So that's due to the genetics, the diversity, the differences in the, gene, the genes and DNA. And then last one, number 21, genetics is just referring to those variations that are passed on to the offspring. So I'm just gonna put an example here so you can remember the strawberries. So strawberry plant, 
surviving and cold temperatures. So if it could survive in colder temperatures, then its genetics, its DNA, had adapted it to survive with those colder environments and colder temperatures.